Hello, it's Scott Manley here. You didn't think I'd let you get away without uh, hearing that at the start of one of my videos, eh? So all those decades of development in navigation help you get close to your Bulbasaur, but the augmented reality portion uses a completely different type of high-precision sensors, which have their origins in missile guidance technology. Well, mostly. Missile guidance systems would uh, generally have three gyroscopes and three accelerometers placed in the middle of a you know three cage gimbal system, and these things would be like about that size, and that would provide acceleration and rotation information to the uh, the rocket as it flew into the sky, carrying its deadly payload or whatever. This, of course, ended up in rockets, and uh, nowadays, thanks to the same kind of technology, we can fit a version of these into a cell phone. It's not one of these big physical units, it's a smaller version, so small that we call them micro-electromechanical devices. So, modern inertial measurement units in personal devices, uh, they basically will come on a single chip and they will include you know, six axis of motion, so that's uh, three axis of acceleration, three axis of rotation. They will also have three axes of magnetic field so they can measure the compass and some of them will have pressure sensors and these things are absolutely tiny. The instruments are actually etched into silicon using uh, you know, the etching process and you not, you're not just etching the stuff on top, you're etching the stuff underneath and it's quite amazing how tiny these things ha uh, become. Accelerometers, you can imagine, are quite easy. You just have a test mass and a load cage and Perhaps you're measuring the capacitance difference. Uh, an accelerometer is probably the simplest micro-electromechanical device you can make, or MEMS, by the way, for short. I'll be saying that. Gyroscopes to measure rotation are just a little more complicated, and there was a great deal of incentive since any moving parts in a spacecraft are more susceptible to breaking compared to the parts that prefer to stay on the sofa all day. No, we didn't develop the technology to make tiny spinning wheels inside silicon chips. And we didn't miniaturize laser gyroscopes, although those are kind of interesting on their own. No, to measure the rotation or gyroscopic effect, using, we use oscillating masses. So this is actually something that was you know, evolved by insects millions of years ago. So insects have little things called haltiers on the side of their head, and they kind of wobble like this. And this is a great photo for the thumbnail, huh? And as they oscillate back and forth, they uh, are little, there's little nerves on the bottom that send signals. And if the fly moves one way or another, the rotation will generate a, co a Coriolis force in these things, which of course can help it navigate and fly. And, you know, it was observed that if you um, surgically remove these things, then the fly will just fall all over the place. Uh, furthermore, they experimented by hanging a little thread from the bottom of a fly and having this keel meant that the fly could stay level again. Yeah you know, terrible things that scientists do in the name of science. Now, uh, d using the same principle, you can have a little oscillating mass inside a chip and, uh, of course, measure the Coriolis force and that gives you your, gy your gyro. So three of these will generally give you that, but modern ones actually have a much more complicated structure which just oscillates on its own and uh, it can measure three axes of rotation using just a single oscillating structure are quite fantastic these days. Now it turns out that games are actually pretty innovative when it comes to motion controls. I think the first example that I know of is the cartridge for WarioWare Twisted on the Game Boy Advance and it included a little gyroscope so it could sense yaw. It actually used a post uh, structure which would oscillate around like that and that would be its structure and it could measure yaw by this rotation. Yeah, another great photo for the thumbnail. The PlayStation 3, when it launched, came with the six-axis controller, and the six-axis controller, of course, it could measure roll and uh, pitch through the accelerometer that was on board, but to calculate yaw or measure yaw, it had another one of these little gyroscopes inside it. The original Wii controller had accelerometers, and it used the sensor bar, which wasn't really a sensor bar, to calculate rotations and things like that, but later on, the Wii Motion Plus accessory, that added the three-axis gyroscopes. So, you know, this has been in there. Of course, Pokemon Go is just like the next iteration of this. And now pretty much every single smartphone has an accelerometers and gyroscopes built in. And some of them are even smarter. They'll have special hardware that can run their own code so that 
for example, in the iPhones, you can track your walking and your running and all this stuff without even waking up the main CPU and therefore keep your make your battery life last longer. And of course, Pokemon Go relies on all these sensors to display that augmented reality uh, view so that when you turn around, you see whatever Pokemon are around you. And actually, I mean, let's just go more general. All these shrinking of components down is nothing compared to the kind of shrinking that has happened for computer processors in general. I mean, one of the early drivers of miniaturization was space programs. Spec like, look at the Apollo Guidance computer. It was developed in the 60s, and when they were developing it, they were essentially using a huge part of the world's production of integrated circuits. It's probably one of the earliest computers that used integrated circuits. They actually used... Uh, what is it, three input NOR gates, and they just bought tons of them and built their computers out of them. They would have uh, like 4,000 of these individual chips that would just do a single gate on a single chip. And that was, of course, a step up from the transistors, where you would have a bunch of discrete transistors doing the same thing. Uh, and since then, the, you know, the, the second generation, the Block 2 of Apollo Guidance computers, they would put two gates on a single integrated circuit. So now my phone has billions of gates on a single processor. They do the CPU, the MMU, the GPU, they do DSPs, they do all this stuff on a single system on a chip that does everything. We are carrying around a miracle of engineering in our pocket and we're using it to hunt Pokemon. Of course, the people that developed this technology did it because there were problems to be solved, because there was a market need for such things. And regardless of whether the solution is used for space travel or hunting Pokemon, it's the fact that it does both is just a great example of how any high-tech program will have effects far beyond its original scope. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Wait, 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 wait. One more thing. Somebody asked me, is it possible to play Pokemon Go in space? And that's an interesting question, obviously, because it is space-age technology. The International Space Station does have Android and iOS tablets on it. However, none of these are connected to the internet, so they wouldn't be able to connect to Niantic servers, which is pretty much what most people are experiencing on Earth right now. But uh, even if they get more servers, they still won't be able to connect. Another thing is that the GPS hardware, which is included on most cell phones, or all cell phones, are essentially uh, civilian units which will turn off if the velocity is too high or the altitude is too high. And this is to stop people making cheap guided missiles using commodity GPS units. So if they got into space, they wouldn't be able to find them even if they could get an internet connection. Of course, this didn't stop Sarcastic Mars Rover from tweeting this image about uh, the new mission that it has. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.